Once upon a time, there was a little girl who dreamt of becoming a fairy. And not just any fairy, the sugar plum fairy. Every year, that dream has a chance of coming true in one very special place, in the Royal Ballet's production of The Nutcracker. A fantasy about an enchanted Nutcracker doll and a young girl called Clara. The ballet tells the story of their battle with the Mouse King and their journey to the Kingdom of the Sweets to meet the Sugar Plum Fairy and her prince. And whoosh, two, three, four... This year, for the very first time, they've let the cameras in to witness the magic behind the scenes. Five, six, seven, eight, mouse! From the students of the Royal Ballet School. Wobbly. Wobbly. Do you feel like a gingerbread now? Yeah. Yes. Yes. To the sparkling sugar plum fairy and her handsome prince. You just have to embrace the glitter. It's never going to be worse than that. We'll see the long journey every girl and boy has to make to fulfill their dancing dreams. Every year, the story of the Royal Ballet's Christmas production of The Nutcracker starts on one very particular day, casting day. We start rehearsals for Nutcracker next week. So we're just about to put the whole cast up so the whole company can see what they're doing for Christmas. But we've got 27 shows. It's the biggest we've ever done. And it's quite nice because it gets the younger ones a chance to be able to do a major classical role on stage. So it's, it's great for them. This is when the dancers find out who has, and who hasn't, been given the roles they've always dreamed of dancing. Is this like a wall of dreams? A wall of tears also. <laughs> <laughs> when Nutcracker goes up, some will be very, very happy, and some people might not be as happy as they thought. What? Oh, no. You know, some people have been doing some of the roles for quite a few years, and other people are doing new things, so they get excited because it's a new role for them and a new challenge. I'm like, moving on up, it's, it's a good day. <laughs> Same as always, but that's Nutcracker. Honey, come on! One person for whom this year's casting is a dream come true is 24-year-old Francesca Haywood, one of the Royal Ballet's most promising young stars. This year, I'm doing the Sugar Plum Fairy for the first time, yeah. which is very exciting. <laughs> it's very cool seeing my name here, the next to like all these other names as well. And there's a pinch me moment. <laughs> Seen by many as Britain's next great ballerina, Francesca has joined the company's biggest stars, having worked her way up to the top rank of the company in just five years. I was told I was going to be a principal at the end of last season and it just seems really surreal. I'm at the top rank of the Royal Ballet, that's... Like, just saying that sounds really weird. <laughs> For director Kevin O'Hare, the Sugar Plum Fairy is the first role he gives to fledgling ballerinas he thinks are ready to fly. I think this is a really important moment in Francesca's career. So now I feel it's time that she really goes for those big classics and there's no bigger really than being the Sugar Plum Fairy is though. The image that everybody has of a ballerina, that is the Sugar Plum Fairy. It is one of the hardest, hardest roles you can possibly do. Danced by some of the Royal Ballet's most famous names, from Margot Fontaine to Darcy Bustle, it's the role any young dancer has to master to become a truly great ballerina. Here at the Royal Ballet, of course, we want it to look as if you've been doing it for years, you're assured, you're the icing on the cake. 
got to do it absolutely perfectly, look beautiful, look like you're totally in charge. The sugar plum fairy has to deliver, or, or else the show just falls flat. Okay, I think I have another one. How could it just disappear? My bunion is so sore today, so I've got the biggest toe separator in. It looks like Mrs. Hannigan <laughs> from Annie. <laughs> 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 I'm joking. <laughs> Francesca's magical rise through the ranks means leaving her friends in the communal dressing room for a room of her own. So today's the day. Oh, Frankie. Sad and happy. I haven't broken until about 4.30, okay. if you need any help. Thank you. It does feel like a big day, but I don't know, I feel a bit sad. I'm just going to miss everyone, I guess. Yeah, I miss the atmosphere up here and the support that everyone gives you. And It does feel like a big step, it's like the end of a big chapter. We've known each other since we were eight, <laughs> so she's basically my closest friend, so yeah, that's why it's sad. <laughs> I can understand Frankie thinking, oh, it's going to be a bit lonely and a bit daunting. I think if I was in a room on my own, I'd just be a bit paranoid that I was, like, running late all the time or something. Yeah. And I'd start, like, kind of going over steps. And if you were doubting yourself, you wouldn't have your friend to ask. Oh, that's really nice. This is my new home. <gasps> I've got a fridge. That's the trick, because I have to share the fridge with everyone else upstairs and it gets really smelly. <laughs> okay. Oh, I like it. It's very quiet. <laughs> Good view. Very nice. Here we go. There it is. <laughs> Every sugar plum fairy needs her prince. Francesca's this year is 29-year-old Australian dancer Alexander Campbell. Frankie and I haven't actually worked together that much. You know, we're still sort of getting used to each other. Morning. How are you? Yeah. I'm very excited. There's a lot there to work on that, you know, could, could make it very special. Alongside Francesca, this will also be his first classical role as a principal. Being a principal of the Royal Ballet puts you in a position where there's a standard that has to be met. You know, the, the, the Royal Ballet has this incredible history, and yeah, it's up to us to uphold that and to carry it forward. Yes! When you're the young soloist coming through, I think people are, well, it's probably in your mind, but you think, oh, people are probably a little bit more lenient and, you know, gunning for you a little bit. Oh yeah, you know, how, how well did that young soloist do? You know, she's on her way or he's on his way. And then all of a sudden you're a principal, so well, you cannot drop below that standard, um, no matter how young you are. It's just a lot of pressure. Hello. 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 <laughs> For Francesca, dancing the sugar plum fairy has been a lifelong dream. Where are the other cats? I think they're probably hiding. Born in Nairobi, she moved to England when she was just two to live with her grandparents, Diana and John. I'm absolutely thrilled that Francesca's a principal. That's what she was sort of aiming for all her childhood. It just feels like a, a fairy story somehow. I okay. sometimes just can't quite believe it's it's real. Okay. Okay. Right, here we are. Mm, do you remember <laughs> <laughs> Miss Valerie's class? Wow. Well, look at my look at how baggy my ears are. <laughs> Yes. Look, Cinderella, you were copying. That was actually the broom from the balcony, I remember. Yes. I brought the outside broom into the living room <laughs> to be Cinderella. <laughs> when Francesca was little, she obviously didn't have a partner for all these 
big roles she pictured herself in. So um, she often used a chair as a partner, or John, or, um, or Pixie. You were a partner quite often, weren't you? You've been the, the sugar plum prince, haven't you? I bet these were Miss Valerie's, weren't they? Being at Miss Valerie's was really fun. Valerie Lesserve's dancing school in Worthing is where Francesca's ballet training began when she was just three. There's a good girl. Well done. I like the tongue work. When she first came into the baby class, the class that Evelyn is in now, Francesca had that something that nobody else has that's different from all the other pupils. That charisma, that aura, something. She just walked in and the posture and everything was there from, from day one. I mean, she was a joy to teach, you know, because she was so focused and dedicated that no matter what you told her to do, she could do. This is my ballet wall about Francesca. And it starts out, really, when she won the Young Dancer of the Year Award in 2010. Um, but because I've run out of wall, I'm sort of having to go over the top of everything. Miss Valerie was the first to spot Francesca's budding talent and encouraged her to audition for the Royal Ballet's Junior School, known as White Lodge. When she went to White Lodge, I really missed her in the classes here. But you can't stop your pupils from forwarding their careers. You know, it was what she had to do. Uh, so uh, my loss was her gain, let's put it that way. Stars shine and bright above you. Tucked now away in Richmond Park, Jesus once a royal hunting lodge, White Lodge is the junior wing of the Royal Ballet School. Birds sing in the sycamore trees. Dream a little dream of okay. One last question. This is where Francesca and countless other Royal Ballet stars, such as Darcy Bustle, started their formal training, aged just 11. One of the school's ballet teachers is Hope Keelan. Francesca Hayward here. Francesca's year group that she was with, there was a lot of talent in the year group, and she made my teaching look fabulous. And, it, you know, she could take my own shame somewhere where I didn't know it could go because her soul, even in year eight, just loved her ballet. And you can't teach that drive. You can inspire it, but you can't teach it. But there might be one short because last time there was one short. For the students at White Lodge, that inspiration begins with the opportunity to dance in the Royal Ballet's Nutcracker. It's a wonderful thing to have a production where so many children are involved. I've got 78 children in year seven, eight, and nine, and the goal has been to try and use all of them in Nutcracker. Just like Francesca, who first danced with the Royal Ballet in this production in year seven. This will be their first step to becoming professional dancers. The moment we start Nutcracker, the children realize why they're here. It's a golden opportunity for our children to experience what it's like to be on the Royal Opera House stage. That's not just any stage, it's huge. We're going up for a small soldier, a page, a party child and Fritz. It's a quite a lot. <laughs> this year I'm going for party child, Fritz, rabbit drummer, tall soldier, small soldier. We're both playing the part of gingerbreads. Mm -hmm. And the gingerbreads come on um, before the battle and they're happy. And then the battle starts and they get really scared. And that's when really the dance properly starts. And yeah. We're yummy, so we've got to look yummy on stage. Stay back, Chris. Stay back. Five, six, seven. New boy Thomas, who's only been at the school for four weeks, 
has his heart set on landing one of the most exciting junior roles in the ballet, the rabbit drummer. A starring part in one of the Nutcracker's most dramatic scenes, the battle with the Mouse King. There's six boys, so it's going to be quite hard to get the rabbit drummer place, which I really want. <laughs> To be rabbit drummer, it's really cool because there's only one of you on stage. So like, there's, for instance, there's so many tall soldiers, but there's only one rabbit drummer and one sentry on stage, and you can just be on your own there and doing your own stuff. Boy, big jump, down. It's difficult because like there's lots of little different steps which you've got to pick up and different arms that are always going to be a bit changey. <laughs> Thomas is up against boys older and more experienced than he is. But he's no stranger to a challenge. After spending year seven playing Billy Elliot on the London stage. For his dancer mum and dad at home in Doncaster, going for the rabbit drummer is evidence of Thomas's determination. When he said, oh, they'll be casting uh, Nutcracker and everything, we thought he might be a little bit, mm, I'm not really sure whether I want to do that. As soon as he got there, because it was something where he had to push himself and it's competitive and I think he just saw everybody else and thought, yeah, I really want this to do this, to do. this is what I want to do. You could hear in his voice that yeah. he desperately wants to try and get one of the parts. So I think it's just in him, yeah, whatever it is. Yeah. Also dreaming of dancing in this year's Nutcracker, are the final year students of the Royal Ballet School in Covent Garden. Nobody talks in the morning, unless they want me for anything specific, which sometimes you do, don't you? But most of the time, they don't talk. It's roughly around 10 hours a day of dancing, um, nine to six. It's a tough life. <laughs> it's their final year of training and they're about to audition for one of the most magical scenes in the ballet, the dance of the snowflakes. In this scene, which takes place in the land of snow, 24 ballerinas transform themselves into snowflakes, creating snow flurries that dance across the stage. Dancing as a snowflake is a rite of passage for any budding ballerina hoping to land a job with the Royal Ballet. And the woman the students have to impress is ballet mistress Samantha Rain. It's a very busy period for us. Some of the dancers here will be doing other roles, which means we'll need students to fill into their role. So I need at least five or six students to make sure they know what they're doing and they could be thrown into different places. Obviously, it's their dream to join the Royal Ballet, and this is the first step, I suppose. 
So I think they are obviously trying to impress. They all want to work with the company. One of the girls hoping to catch Sam's eye is 18-year-old Nadia. Having Sam Ray coming over is, is quite scary because we're in the third year now, so we're kind of looking for a job. In a way, it's like an audition every, every time she comes and teaches us. You have to be so on the ball and because there's a lot of kind of running around and patterns and if you're not in the right place at the right time, it can be really kind of, it's all really fast as well. We're working so hard underneath it and to everyone else it looks like we're just floating. <laughs> Point two. Now run out to make your circle. Not only is Snowflakes the most complicated choreography in the ballet, it's also gruelling on the body. Snowflakes is really tough on your feet because there's a lot of point work, a lot of fast foot work. This <laughs> is really disgusting. <laughs> I've just got really bruised toenails. Yeah. They're pretty bruised. <laughs> For Francesca, becoming the Sugar Plum Fairy will be the culmination of a wish she made when she was just three years old. It was a wish that came alive thanks to a precious family heirloom. This was the very first ballet video I ever watched. Nine pounds ninety nine. It was from W. H. Smith. <laughs> Good old Smiths. <laughs> I love Smiths. As soon as you heard music, you had to get up and danced. As soon as I saw it, I just wanted to be doing it too. Yeah, I think I you thought she really was a fairy, yeah. a real fairy. Yeah. Um, um, and you just wanted to be her? In my head, I was. I had everything. I had the dress on, and I was on stage, and people were clapping. <laughs> <laughs> it has been a, an amazing thing, almost as if it was meant to happen. And as if by magic, Francesca's first ever sugar plum, Leslie Collier, has been given the task of helping her transform into a fairy. Today is their first rehearsal. I feel Sugar Plum Fairy is danced mostly at Christmas time, and I always felt as a dancer that I had to give a present to that audience. And I say that to people that I coach, remember, it's a present. Joining them is the Nutcracker's fairy godfather, the ballet's choreographer, Sir Peter Wright. He'll be overseeing this year's production on his 90th birthday. A great sugar plum fairy needs to have gone one step further than just being a lovely ballerina, doing all her beautiful steps and lifts and jumps and pirouettes. She's got to feel and believe that she's a magical being. She should be light and sparkling and weightless. You make the audience think that you can really fly. He has memories of Margot doing it. I never saw Margot do it, but he has lovely memories and he tries to make all his sugar plums recreate that image that he remembers, which is very nice, actually. So I guess it's up to us to try to keep Peter's wishes alive as best we can. Late for the <laughs> Leslie was the first proper ballerina that I ever watched, and so I feel that it represents everything that you've trained years and years and years for to become a ballerina. Now I've got to this stage, that's incredible, but I'm a baby ballerina, like this is, I mean, maybe if I look back on this in 10 years, I'll laugh at myself and think, you know, <laughs> how young and inexperienced I was. All the way to the corner and come round the front. And it's so difficult to explain what makes a great sugar plum. And then it comes in. She must look like a fairy and she has to transport you to another world. I love Frankie. I love her a lot because I find that I will have just mentioned something to her and I find that she does it. 
I don't have to say it again. It's, she's a remarkable girl. I was emotional at times. There was one moment in that rehearsal I, I did think, I'm doing the Sugar Plum Fairy and it's for real. <laughs> well, that's, that's got lovely, you see, that's just the right line. The important thing with this whole part of her is stress on sugar plum fairy. Mm -hmm. So beautiful and sparkling and light. And all the time you look as if you're floating on the floor. But it's quite good. I think actually. that was a very good rehearsal. Yes. No, it's Thank going to be you. lovely. Very good. You look very good together. Thank you. Oh, no. And she looks like a fairy. <laughs> exactly. Yes, yes, she does. <laughs> I, th I think, you know, a lot of people have said, you know, physically, you know, we're a good match. Um, you know, height wise and all the rest of it. And then I think actually seeing you on stage and knowing what I like to perform, you know, yeah. how I like to perform, um, there's there's a possibility that's going to be a good match as well. You never know until you get on and, and do it. But it's all smiles at the moment, so. Yes. Ballet marriage. <laughs> Beautiful. Get back to us in like three, four months and we're divorced. <laughs> Ballet divorce. <laughs> Couples therapy. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm excited. No. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> Every year, the full company rehearsals for The Nutcracker begin with the arrival of guest principal ballet master, Christopher Carr. We have five weeks to get this massive production on with all these casts. This cast sheet is probably the most complicated cast sheet we've ever had. It's quite a big undertaking. My blood pressure just goes zoop. <laughs> Mr. Carr's first job is a visit to White Lodge, where he too was once a student, to cast the child roles in The Nutcracker. It's like going back to school for me, uh, going back through these gates. It's scary. <laughs> this is the moment the children have been building up to. You have to give him what he wants or he's not pleased. He'll change every single thing and like he'll spend ages on like you doing your part and it's that's quite daunting. He's really he's exact. There. It's so that he gets what he wants, so yeah. it's like to top to notch quality. Nature. Your foot could be like a millimetre too high and, and he'll, he'll say shout. too high, too high. Mm -hmm. And it'll be like that much lower and you'll go perfect. <laughs> I think they build up this day a little bit in their minds that it's like make or break time, really. I'm terrible with names, but um, I'm quite good with steps, but I'm not so good with names. <laughs> That's what's going <counts. laughs> So let's start with, why don't we get Casper to go first? So you're running to meet your family. Yes, exactly. Yeah. First up to audition is 12-year-old Casper. Yes! All right, okay, so try not to do... Yeah, <laughs> normal. <laughs> as soon as I walk into the studio, I usually tell them, you are not a dancer. Exactly the opposite from what they've been taught at White Lodge. <laughs> the running on was good. I like them to be totally natural, as if they're enjoying themselves, really, and, and not really having trained as a dancer. We want it to be real. It has to be real. Because I was the first one, I was getting quite a lot of corrections, but I don't take corrections in a bad way. I think that they're a way they want you to improve. And what I normally do is I write down all the corrections I get after a rehearsal or ballet class, 
and then I just read through them before I go to bed and then I try and put them into place the next day and then hopefully I'll get new ones or hopefully he'll say it was good either. It's nice. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. I think it's a bit like the army when I'm taking a rehearsal. <laughs> Uh, I, I, I mean, I, I, I do drill a lot because when they're performing, there's a lot that can go wrong. Tight foot, da da. I give a, a thousand percent of myself. I mean, I do all day. I'm here. I'm a wreck when I get home at night. But you know, it's fulfilling when the curtain goes up and you see what's been done and how people improve because you've screamed at them all day. Down, up, down. Brush, brush, tap. One, 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 two, three. Chasse. All right, okay. If you're not together, even your mother will know you've gone wrong. Yeah, let's go from. Next in line are the boys auditioning for the prized role of the rabbit drummer. It's make or break time for Thomas. Fingers crossed. I'll hopefully get it. <laughs> but Thomas has to wait his turn as the more senior boys are up first. Get quicker up the second time, and up! All right, OK, hang on. What's With time running out, not everyone can be seen. Um, come forward another set. So let's look at the other set of rabbit drummers. Uh, this is yeah. the one you haven't seen. Right. Can I see this one very quickly? Yes. Yeah. Like Thomas or Aiden? Aiden? They both got it. Who's the most senior? Uh, Thomas is. Thomas. Or Aiden. 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 OK, right. go. Okay. Unfortunately, it's not Thomas's day. It was even me and Aiden anyway, so we were the senior. So I didn't get to perform, because obviously Aiden's in year nine. So he did it, and then I didn't get to do it, so well, it was okay. Um, and you haven't seen little Thomas? I said, would you like to see these boys again? And he picked the two that he wanted to see. So he's made the decision, and he's the boss. First and second we saw today. So, so you know, these knocks is part of the training. They have no control over it. It, you know, they just have to ride the wave. That's what it is. For the student snowflakes in waiting, it's also casting day. And it's good news for Nadia. This could be her chance to shine on the Opera House stage. My name's down for snowflakes and flowers and Sleeping Beauty as well. Yeah. Which is going on all at the same time. <laughs> well, when I saw the casting, I kind of like had a little butterfly in my tummy and stuff, but mainly excited. <laughs> And there's no time to rest. It's straight off to the first Snowflakes rehearsal with the main company. For the students, it, it is very daunting. There's a lot to learn and there's a lot of pressure to come up to the level of the company. I'm quite excited, but it's also quite nerve-wracking because it's sometimes a bit intimidating. And they're all... <laughs> it should be fun. So come to the middle red, leaders. Make this a circle, try and bulge out. Come to the middle red. In this complex dance, one of the hardest challenges is finding your marks while being constantly on the move. In the studio, there are red marks on the floor, tape marks, but on stage, they denote the red lights, basically, so it's a way of finding where you are on the stage, because you can imagine at the edge of the stage, it's just black. So it helps the dancers to find exactly where they should be. And then something like snowflakes, every single place is essential. And stop and lift everything on that burst. You know, everyone's trying to get to their place and their spot before the jeté circle at the end. And if you don't know, there's definitely going to be a crash. And I've seen a few wigs flying off in the past as well. <laughs> Yeah, it's very unforgiving if you don't know what you're doing. 
yeah. Um, but fortunately, because it's a, a team thing, you'll have people who help you. So I remember a girl going in last minute, we had a very basic placing call for her and then she was on. And I remember actually just grabbing her waist and moving her <laughs> so that she stayed in the same same pattern. So yeah, we help each other out and it works. We'll get there eventually. Okay, stop, 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 stop. <laughs> Yeah, it makes us feel better that some people are here making mistakes as well. That was useless, but carry on for now too. It's so complicated, the counts and just everyone doing different things and like each line is going a separate way and it's so hard to keep your brain together. That's it, good. Good, very good everyone. Not bad for a first time. Over in the Kingdom of the Sweets, Francesca and Alexander have also reached a key moment in their rehearsals. They will now run the entire piece from start to finish. I just got a text right now um, from my nan wishing me good luck for my rehearsal of Sugar Plum. She knew I was running it for the first time. And who said being a fairy was easy? For Francesca, the dance of the Sugar Plum Fairy is a grueling 12-minute workout, a long pas de deux followed by a punishing solo. Good girl. Don't, don't be sorry. Don't be sorry. You've never done this before. Stretch your calves. Of course it's not easy. We haven't actually worked on it at all for a whole week. And Francesca particularly has to test how it feels. And then it'll give her the idea of what she's got to build on. It's about building stamina to make it look effortless. I think when you run it for the first time, it can be a little bit of a, you know, reality check. And um, you realise, actually, this was a lot harder than maybe I was anticipating, which is why it's good to do it sooner rather than later, because you don't want to run it two days before and go, oh my God, I'm a long way away from where I need to be. After Alexander's solo, Francesca then has a challenging 16 for wet turns before going straight into the finale with her prince. You're basically relying on your autopilot, so that's why you train for eight years, because that's when you need it. When you're that tired, you actually can't be thinking about it, you just need to know it's gonna happen, and you hope that it will. Well done. Well done. It's never going to be worse than that. <laughs> it's never going to be worse than that. Okay. My right leg just felt like it weighed about 10 stone. That's it. Right. It's fine. I'll be upstairs. I'm really impressed because I would never have done that so far away from the performance. <laughs> so we've got a nice long time to build that up. Yep. Okay. Have a breather. Have a breather. <laughs> Let's take them off and hang them up. <laughs> With three weeks to go until opening night, it's all hands on deck to create the world of the Nutcracker. Making magic takes hard work and attention to detail. Have yourself a merry little Christmas. Let your heart be light. 
From now on, my troubles will be out of sight. Bit to keep two. Go. Can I take a picture, please? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if the fates allow, hang a shining star upon the highest bough, and have yourself a merry little Christmas. We're revving up for the start of Nutcracker. The rehearsals are really in full swing now, and so it's all coming together, and we actually have to sort of glue it all so to make sure the magic of the Nutcracker and the magic of Christmas comes together. Nice and controlled. Big push. Easy. I just stretched them out. It's better. <laughs> For Sir Peter, there's one last job to do to make this year's production extra special. Four and five and six and seven. For his 90th birthday, he's decided to re-choreograph one of the most memorable dances in the ballet, the Chinese dance, helping him are male soloists Marcelino and Luca. Hi. Yes. I'm Peter Wright. Hi, nice. I'm Luca. Nice, nice to see you. <laughs> I'm going to need you to... Show me some fabulous steps and things that you love doing. OK, yes, no problem. Yes, could. <laughs> it's always great to have the choreographer in the room. And how fab for Luca and Marcelino to have time in the studio. I mean, I saw them before and they were excited, you know, and it's lovely for them to feel they're part of this ongoing tradition of the Nutcracker, and Peter's Nutcracker. What about two back and then two... They need steady. something more in there. Before they go to her. Yes. Is it a bit like... Yeah! Yeah, <laughs> something like that. <laughs> yes. When I'm creating a new dance, I do like to get the cooperation of the dancers involved. The two dancers were chosen because they're all brilliant dancers, and I thought this is an must be an opportunity to show the men off and uh, see what they can do. Sometimes, great moments of dance happen quite by accident. Oh. But then Sir Peter always has an eye for something new. And you could go further back then. Don't be lovely. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> yes. You did that falling back on after. <laughs> can you fall back? <laughs> yeah. And then... <laughs> <laughs> so what? So do the frogs and the splits flat. And one, one and two. Travel forward. Four, five, six, seven, eight. And inwards. Ten, eleven, twelve, and... No, hard. it's not hard. It's only half a second. <laughs> it's going to be fabulous. Will. Next step is actually going into the studio now and actually make sure that we can do all the steps correctly. Because they was kind of like just like rushing through and like really just exploring what we can actually do with it. But I think the next step is cleaning it up and making it look really, really like amazing for the opening night. So everybody really gets excited to see a new a new choreography by Sir Peter Wright, which is which, which is spectacular to see him choreographing at this age. You know, it's it's an honor for us really. Look. Ten past. With four casts needed over the run of 27 shows, it's now time for Mr. Carr to teach the other boys the Chinese dance's explosive moves. Right, where's the first team? Where are you? One, two, and three, four. Over, down, over, down. Run, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Stop. All right, okay. Not bad, actually. You'll get that. All right. Yeah, that's killer. It's hard as well. Yeah. Trying something so, that was created on someone else for the first time. <laughs> Trying to put it onto your body. I have to kind of learning. adapt slightly. <laughs> yeah. Let's show us. This is the originator. <laughs> yes? Yeah? yeah? 
It's an incredibly hard number. That's what it's turned into being, really, really difficult. I hope Sir Peter Wright will be incredibly happy, else I have failed. Dressing the huge cast of the Nutcracker requires over 700 handmade costumes, an essential ingredient to bringing each character to life. All right, let's go. Come on. Chippy chat, send your pops. <laughs> With the dances learned, it's now dressing up time for the White Lodges. Thanks, Tom. We're just preparing our hair to go into uh, the rat hats because uh, the rat hats are so big, we need to have them uh, quite flat. It's look pretty. <laughs> no, it really look like mouse. I think this would be a bit big on me, they make my shoulders look really big. Yeah, same. Yeah, but then when you get moved... The harness, though. Yeah. Look at me, like... This is cool. I love Do you feel like a gingerbread now? Yeah. 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 It's a lot of things to put on. <laughs> it's like little the rabbit drummer mask is always an object of fascination. It's really heavy and I, my eyes only go to the fur so I can't actually see in the holes. This year, Jared and Rin have been chosen as the rabbit drummer. Come on, bro. You, you can rub a massive head on for, well. for both boys, this will be their last year dancing in the Nutcracker. Last year he decided to break his foot. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I was running and I just went like that. And I fractured right here, this bone. And then they were like, I mean, I'm sorry, I don't think you could do that forever. So I fractured it. And I was just like crying and crying. Yeah, it's not fun. For both of them, this is a vital opportunity to test out the rabbit mask before going on stage. It's not a pleasant smell. It's quite hot. Otherwise, it's quite fun because you can like pull silly faces and nobody will know. It's quite exciting because you can't really see through straight, so you have to actually look a bit down. And I just need to make sure the head doesn't really fall off when I'm jumping. Thank you very much. Now, have you got your label? Yes. It's not just dressing up time for the kids. Every fairy needs a tutu. And today, Francesca is having hers tailor-made. It's her final step to becoming the sugar plum fairy. Yeah, I just need steaming down a little. It's really, really brand new. <laughs> Every tutu is specific to the role, and until they get to do their role, they don't know how the tutu feels, mm. the costume feels, and it's very important because it will affect the, the dance. So it has to be really custom-made for, for them to perform the role at the best. It's about as tight as I think it can go for now, otherwise. You need to understand, They're as I said, yeah, yes, They're yes, yes. It's a bit of a specific skill, but they're beautiful. And they look like big flowers, you know, there's this <laughs> explosion of flowers when they're not finished. And they're actually quite cheerful. It's one of the prettiest costumes to work on. The material will give as well once I sweat in it, so it will probably behave differently, which is a good thing, so I need to sweat in it. Quite soon. <laughs> <laughs> Good 
Good morning. Good morning. We've talked the whole night through. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. With less than a week to go, it's time for the entire company to come together for the dress rehearsals. When the band began to play, the stars were shining bright. Now the milkman's on his way. It's too late. If there's any change, it will be in red. And so if you check that before at the half each time, that would be great. Thank you. It could quite easily just change. This is the moment the children, the snowflakes, and the sugar plum fairy will get to dance their parts on stage for the first time. Oh, it's getting ready for Christmas. Oh, that is just perfect. For many white lodgers, a first visit to the opera house means being within touching distance of their favorite stars. This is a dream, especially for the year sevens that have just come in. I mean, they've only been here, what, I suppose, uh, 10, 11 weeks. And to suddenly be here at the Opera House with the Royal Ballet Company and its nutcracker, and uh, this is beyond excitement. You're going to have to be very, very alert. Listen, it's the most important thing. You listen to two people in general, apart from our, our staff, and that's this lady here, and she's called Yo. She's the most important person on the stage. She's the stage manager. So whatever she says, go. How are you feeling? First time on. Good. Excited. Excited. Yeah. That's quite right. First to rehearse on stage is the battle scene. I'm quite excited to play rabbit drummer today and it's really exciting because I get to be on stage with the company, with the sets, the battle scene, garden explosions and especially the hat. So it's quite nerve-cracking but I try to do my best. So I just need to watch out for Mr. Carr's voice a lot just so I can take in his correction and do the best. That was quite scary. Up, up, and up, one. Anything could happen. This is the first time they'll have seen the trap door. The first time they'll have seen the rat king coming up through it. Does it close? Doesn't it close? Does the wheelchair come out of the right wing? Oh, the tree might go up, it might not go up. It's very exciting. It's, it's sort of lethal, <laughs> leave wonderful. And the kids come off and they're taking the mask off going, it's so cool, Miss Keelan, the Rat King's tail got caught. And we had to, you know, anyway, I, can't, I wait for it. So sorry, yep, yep. We need adjustment with this boy's hat, it's horrendous. <laughs> he carried on whatever, but he couldn't see a thing. It's the it's right down here. Well done. Grab your food, B team, and go to the stairs, okay? The kids rehearsed, and only 10 minutes left on the clock. It's time for the snowflakes to take to the stage. But there's a problem. Cole, where are you? First chorus. So there was a student stuck in the lift. Okay. <laughs> Right, is she here now? I don't know. They were still stuck in the lift about 10 minutes. All the angels are stuck in the lift, and two of them are snowflakes. So when we get to the second run, which we're about to do with the last 10 minutes of rehearsal, we can't actually put them in because they're in the lift. It's not their fault, but it's a shame they've missed their rehearsal. Use your heads! By the time the angels are released from the lift, they have missed their only chance to get on stage before opening night. Basically, we went up to the sixth floor and like, basically, we were stuck in the lift for like uh, an hour and 15 and we missed the rehearsal. Nadia too has missed her last chance to rehearse before the paying audiences arrive. I won't get a chance on stage, but now I've got to go on on Tuesday probably in costume, in wigs, everything. And I'm not going to know where I'm going to leave it. I'm going to try and just get a feel of it just by looking now. And to see, I think these marks are the same as the studio, so I think I'm just going to look at these marks here. Because no, I, no, I think the lights are quite confusing. <laughs> uh, it's so important to know where you're going, because especially when you're at the front, for one of the bits I'm right at the front and all the girls behind me have to line up with me. So I have to make sure that I'm in the right place. Can we get the angel on the tree quicker? Is that glitter already? The following day, it's Francesca and Alexander's turn to rehearse on stage. There's a lot of glitter. 
For the Sugar Plum Fairy and her prince, this will be the first time they dance in front of the company with a full orchestra. Recording, please, Mr. Rose, to open this room. Please, recording, Mr. Rose. Halfway through my skull. Yeah. <laughs> you just have to embrace the glitter. Tristan, I think in the boys' dance you're doing the wrong head. Beautiful. Nice. Can I just try it a tie, like the tiny bit further back, just to yeah. stay, just to get it, and then I'll. Are you Arabians around? Yeah. I am nervous. There's always a bit of interest when there's a new couple doing a role for the first time. This is your call to sweep the snow. Guinness, this is your call to sweep the snow. You know, we'll, we'll find out a lot from this run. Five, hold six, and seven, and we're down by eight. Boys, you've got to put them down. It's not going anywhere. No, it's not going to yeah. go anywhere. I'm just going to tie this back down because you can't feel it. Okay. Okay. Because this is a disaster going across the front on the assembly. I won't be this dressed before the show, so I just... I stress when I feel rushed and I hate rehearsals for this reason. Julia, were you not lit? Did you turn it on? <laughs> Darling, there's a button, you just press it. Yes? Today is the last chance. It's the last chance to see what's wrong with it, to correct it, to make it perfect, because I only do perfect. That is all I do is perfect. She'll find it much more tiring than she did in the studio. And Alex as well. They, they're both well. It's killer. In a studio, you're working in front of a mirror. Here is just like a big, massive opening in front of you. So very different. It's like going on blind. I mean, it's, you know, it's like driving a car for the first time. Horrendous. So they need to use the time to actually get the feeling of it. The Sugar Plum solo is very, very long, actually, for the girl. It takes a lot out of you. It is enjoyable, but it really is like one massive marathon from start to finish. At the moment, because I'm, you know, I'm still building my stamina, I'm seeing stars, and I feel like I'm swimming underwater. It's like an effort just to get on point at this moment. <laughs> Went numb during the end. Yeah. You know, I just like, couldn't actually feel that it was there because I wasn't expecting it to be perfect. No. And I definitely wasn't perfect for me. No. Well, the things that look easy that are actually difficult, yeah. they were very smooth. Um, and I think that's what's nice. When <clears throat> that's when it looks its best. I mean, that's, that's why we rehearse though. That's why we practice. You know, so that even when I mean, you can't feel it like that's a scary thought. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, it, it, the one thing as you start, it triggers everything, so it should all fall into place. Do you want to go and do that? Yes, please. We've got a week before they do their first performance, and I want them to carry that feeling with them the sound of the orchestra, not just the piano. And I think that will help us get the stamina for it not to be so, so difficult, so, so hard. It's debut day in Covent Garden. In just a few hours, the Opera House will be filled with two and a half thousand people. What a fabulous place. It's amazing. There's magic around. For the Sugar Plum Fairy and her prince, the morning begins with a company class and one last rehearsal. You know, this is her 
debut as a sugar plum, as a principal, I'm, I'm looking after her, so <laughs> you don't want to do anything wrong. It's just a lot of pressure. You just have to trust your preparation at this point. The last rehearsal, you sort of want to be feeling positive about it, and I think that happened today, so I think we're in a, a decent spot. Looking forward to it. Very nice how you looked at her, or when you walked around. I think we're at a good point now, and, and the only way we're going to get any better is actually by being on stage. If I just go out there and take, literally take it one step at a time and just enjoy it and try and be the sugar plum fairy, then I'll be happy. As long as I don't fall over, touch wood. You've worked so hard to get there. Now you've just got to get on. Yeah. These talented people don't come every day through the door. It's a bit special. I'm really very proud of you. That's a really special thing to have your first sugar plum telling you that she's really proud of you. For Francesca's grandparents, it's the day they've been waiting for since she was a little girl. Say good luck, Francesca. Let's see. Francesca will be looking out for this cardigan because I wore it the very first time she was on the Royal Opera House stage in Sleeping Beauty. And that's, she said, gave her a lot of comfort when she saw this particular jumper in the front row. So that I should be wearing for act two. So, you know, there it is, going in my bag now. <laughs> Already <coughs> set. I'll probably be in tears, but I don't want her to see that. So um, it's such an emotional moment, and the music's so emotional too. If I weren't in tears, it would be rather sad, really. <laughs> Will you be crying as well? No. <laughs> We started this such a long time ago, and finally we're on the stage, which is the journey that it's all about. We've fitted everything, we've got the costumes all right, the masks all fit, nothing's falling off, even the trapdoor works, so it's very exciting. There's so many hats. I'm Jared, I'm doing Rabbit Drummer today and Party Child, but I'm in Party Child at the moment because I've got a quick change into Rabbit Drummer backstage and it's a bit of a kerfuffle and everything's going on. It's quite hard to keep all the counts in my head because there's so much going on in the battle scene. It's crazy. You've got rats coming on with cannons, loud gunshots, music, which is all over the place. I'm sad for this season because this is my last performance in year nine as a child in the Nutcracker. But I just hope it goes well and nothing goes wrong. You don't need to look for Joshua. Joshua. <laughs> Student Snowflake Nadia will also be making her debut in today's show. This will be her first time ever, dancing in the corps de ballet of a professional company. I'm more excited actually than nervous. I just love the rush <laughs> when you go on stage yeah. and feel. Yeah. This is my first show, so I hope I remember it. <laughs> my mum's watching as well. She managed to get a last minute ticket. There was like eight tickets left or something and she managed to get one. The Nutcracker is a story of a magician's nephew who has been turned into a Nutcracker doll and who can only be freed after defeating the Mouse King with the help of a young girl. In one of the ballet's most dramatic scenes, the magician transforms a family Christmas living room into a giant battlefield.
is now set for the children of White Lodge, and an epic battle between the toy soldiers and the wicked mice led by the Mouse King. It's time for the rabbit drummer to leap into action. soldiers and mice battle it out on stage, Nadia joins her fellow snowflakes warming up in the wings. This is the dream, this is you know one of the most amazing stages in the world and it's such an honour to be on it and also a lot of the time in rehearsal I would, if I didn't know where to go I would always know the, the girl that I would have to follow on this bit or oh yeah I have to follow Izzy on that bit. Whereas now everyone looks identical, they're all wearing blonde wigs, everyone's wearing the same costume. was great. Yeah, it was a great run that time. It's my last Nutcracker. It's a bit disappointing, but at least I get a Christmas next year in a way, so it's not all bad. The night might be over for Jared, but for Nadia, her transformation into a snowflake is about to begin.
That's unbelievable. I mean, the first time with a professional company on that incredible stage. I can't really explain that. I'm going to be speechless. It's so magical, especially when the snow starts falling. I just, how lucky am I? It feels like everything I've kind of put my whole life towards, my whole childhood, you know, I've been sacrificing everything. And it feels like this is kind of the kickoff now. Hopefully, my professional life will start next year. So. <laughs> The interval is nearly over, and for Francesca, it's the moment of truth. Having spent the past six weeks transforming herself into the sugar plum fairy, she is about to realize her childhood dream. When I look back to watching ballet videos for the first time when I was so small, you know, these iconic ballet roles like Sugar Plum Fairy. It feels like that's what I was meant to do, I think. It feels really right to be here. I just need to stay really calm and not dwell on the fact that there's 2,000 people watching and any other thoughts. That's not going to help anyone. Forgotten. Yeah. We've uh, we've just had the final call for um, Act Two, beginners, so just getting ready. Um, Frankie's just arrived, so I'm excited, but you know, a little nervous obviously. And I, I just really wanted to go well for Frankie. It's Act Two. And we are in the Kingdom of the Sweets in the realm of the Sugar Plum Fairy. But as quickly as their night begins, Francesca and Alexander leave the stage to make way for a series of exotic dances. They now have a 20-minute wait before they're back on for the climax of the ballet. One of the hardest things about Sugar Plum is that wait between the introduction and the grumper. It feels like an eternity. You're trying to stay warm, you're trying not to use too much energy, trying to keep your emotions in check. That's the biggest challenge, I think. One of the interludes is the new Chinese dance with Marcelino and Luca. stage for the Sugar Plum. You know how many great people have danced it before you. And so those first six or eight steps are very daunting.
there's a change in the atmosphere and you can feel it. You can feel that something's about to happen and everyone knows it. And as soon as the music starts, that you have to channel the fear.
With the pas de deux over, it's now time for one of the most iconic solos in ballet, the dance of the sugar plum fairy. And now for the prince's solo, before the sugar plum fairy is back on for the dazzling finale.
Yeah. It was worth it. <laughs> Oh god. Good, really good. Really good. Thank you for Yeah, he looked after you, didn't he? Thank you. You were yummy. Thank you. Thank you so much for everything. I really mean it. Thank you very much. Oh, Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you. When I see good dancing like that, it's uplifting. The music and the way they dance, bliss. A girls leading off, by the way. Girls lead off. Yeah. Couples, couples. Well, I was in tears for most of it. So, I mean, it, it's just so amazing to think that she was trying to dance that at two years old, and now it's actually happening. Two years later, she's actually doing yeah, it. So. And who told you fairy stories don't come true? Enjoy a new performance of Mozart's The Magic Flute from Glyndebourne tonight at 7 on BBC4. Here next, Gareth Malone's Christmas Concert. <laughs>